And what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John, from the Game of Duel here, welcoming you to week five of the NFL Power Rankings. And honestly, I'm only, you know, raise your hand if you were surprised that I got this out an hour before the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Chicago Bears were playing. I'm not even raising my hand. I'm not surprised. I'm terrible at, like, thinking about everything and, like, setting things up. And, like like I said, this is a, I'm not surprised whatsoever. First thing I'm going to preface is... This is a very opinionated filled video, so don't be surprised in the comments. Uh, actually, I appreciated the comments last week um, about like a lot of people like say like where I should move things and what I should do with the teams and this that, the other. Who I overrated, who I underrated. I do appreciate those comments because it gives me actually a platform to discuss or even further why I put places where. Because again, unlike a lot of other power ranking people. I pay attention to comments. I look at the comments and say, huh, what are they thinking? How is everybody kind of viewing what I'm thinking? And then it gives me a platform to be like, okay, this is why I thought this way, but I can agree with you here, here, and here, and here. Um, so obviously I did like that a ton. So keep those comments a rolling. But with that being said, let's go ahead and start with the obvious Who's at number 32? If you guys want to place your bets, it's obviously going to be 100%. You guys can't be wrong. It's the New York Jets. Adam Gase needs to be fired. Oh my gosh. How long is it going to take until Adam Gase is fired? Literally. This team, yeah, both teams were on a short week and blah, 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 blah. You can say anything that you want to say. But when you get beat down by a injured, battered Broncos team by what would have been double digits um if a pick six didn't happen it's just awful you like yeah is this what is and, and it was the first nfl start for this quarterback and he made him look like he was good yeah he threw a couple interceptions but the fact is is like the amount of turnovers that the jets had and still lost just proves how terrible this team is. This team was definitely in a position that they could have won, but they still lack the ability to do good. Next, we got the New York Giants, who actually I was debating on moving up after their performance against the Rams. Their defense finally kind of looked the way that we were kind of wanting it to look. Um, and I'm hoping that the defense continues to get better. Um, and I'll be very interested to see how this defense plays against a good offense in the Dallas Cowboys. Um, with the Cowboys suspect defense, if Daniel Jones plays well, I they could be an upset pick of the week. Now, obviously, I wouldn't pick them to be an upset. I would say that they probably are going to lose. But if anybody wants to go against and pick an upset, this is one that you might want to pick. I mean, the fact of the matter is the fact that they that the, both teams really should be winless. I mean, and that's crazy to me that this NFC it's an NFC least showdown. Um, but yeah, honestly, 30 31's a good spot for them. If they win, they'll move up. Um, cause especially if their defense shows what their I want their defense to show against a premier offense like the Dallas Cowboys. Let's move on to who won. They didn't move up, up despite a win. You're playing the Jets and you almost lost, and you had three turnovers. Like you don't deserve to move up, Broncos. I'm sorry. Like, that's all I'm going to say there. I talked a lot about them against the Jets. Just so many issues they have to figure out. It's just not their year. I'm sorry. I just, I hate to say it. Now, the biggest fall of the week belongs to none other than the Houston Texans. What a train wreck. A, and this, I did not think, again... I did not think after I dropped the, the Vikings 10 spots, I didn't think we'd have another 10 spot drop, but the tight year, the Texans certainly deserve a 10 spot drop after basically falling flat on their face at home against the Vikings, who had one day of practice before the game. You lost, you had a full week to prepare for the Vikings. The Vikings had one day, and you still fell flat on your face, looked terrible, did not play well. Deshaun Watson was running for his life. There's so many issues in Houston um, that, honestly, I'm glad Bill O'Brien got fired. I'm sure everybody's glad that he got fired. Uh, obviously, of course, you know, it sucks for him, but 
he did terrible at coaching this team. He did so many suspected GM moves. Like, the, his time was coming for sure. And, yeah, this team just... I When a team can look that bad, <laughs> it was terrible. So, they're at 29. They have basically no hope for the playoffs. There's absolutely nothing that they can do. Um, hopefully, they can... I guess continue to be better and get better as a team, but holy cannoli, they have some issues. They need to work things out. Next is the Atlanta Falcons dropping three spots after their loss. Uh, they lost to, I can't remember at this point because it's way too long, uh, the Packers. Again, you lose the Packers ball club in the same manner you lost to the Seahawks. Like, they, you literally were overmatched. Um, and you just, you drop three spots only because the teams behind you played way better. I definitely believe they're still in that 24 to 28 range week by week basis. They can still compete and do well offensively. It's whether or not this defense cannot be suspect anymore. Um, and the problem is, is that because the offense actually had a lack of production one week, it kind of showed how reliant on the offense this Atlanta Falcons team is and what this team wants to do and how this team wants to do it. Um, and they really didn't get that opportunity to like kind of do well and play well because their offense was suspect. Like I honestly, like I said, against the Packers ball club, it was kind of, you were going to lose. Um, and I'm not surprised at the outcome of the game in any way, shape or form, but honestly, good week for the Falcons in keeping the teams in check. Um, but again, a lot of other teams played better. Uh, one team that actually got a win last week and is going to move up a couple spots is the Philadelphia Eagles. Here's my thing on the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of Philadelphia Eagles fans are going to be like, why didn't she move us up more? You did not win that game. The 49ers lost it. Let's be fair. The 49ers lost that game. They tripped on their own feet the entire way through. Everything just kind of fell out of place. Nick Mullins throws a pick six. If that pick six isn't thrown, who knows who wins. But still, at that point, with the spread of the game, a five-point loss, you can just see that the Eagles are not good enough to make it anywhere. They might win the NFC least, but even then, that's a little bit of a... I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, their team needs to get better. Um, right now they are leading the NFC least, but are not looking like a good team whatsoever. They do move up a couple spots though, because they were able to persevere and get a good win, but yeah, it looked like a train wreck out there and I'm sorry, but yeah, I just, oof. uh, a team that's going to move down a lot of spots, <laughs> Jaguars, they lose to the Bengals. Um, it's not a, it's not anything like too bad, but like 505, that's that number in the head, 505. That is the amount of yards that they have allowed this Bengals offense is looking good it's their the offensive line and their defense that isn't but when their defense came to play last week it was it was nice to see you know um realistically this should have been more of a blowout than it was but the garbage time really helped this team and yeah they're gonna drop four spots on that and of course the next team we're gonna look at is the Bengals who move up three spots after their victory Honestly, if, if their defense can clutch up and be better, this team can definitely hit a 6-10 and 10 season. Um, I definitely, if I'm going to look at it objectively, I feel like this team is not the worst team. Obviously, if they're in the bottom of the worst like line. Um, but I do believe that this team does have a lot of things that they need to work on. as They're, they're, they're the beginning of the teams that have things to work on um, and could do decently throughout the season. Um, I think if they congeal and work on the offensive line problems that they've had the entire season with a rookie quarterback, it'll be interesting to watch this team. I think that this team could do some damage to some of these high tier teams if they, because they're competitive. Um, and it'll be cool to see this team against other teams. The next team we're going to talk about here is the Los Angeles Chargers, who finally proved to me that they can move up into this tier. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it because I was like, I'm like, they're in this bad tier this entire time, and it's annoying me because. A lot of people have them way higher than I have them. Like, a lot of people still have them in that 17 to 20 range. I don't feel like they're there yet. They still need to get better quality wins. 
Um, they let a 17 point lead slip from them. They, like I said, they still have work to be done, but I feel like they're definitely getting better as a team and as a ball club. And I want to get that. I want to get them and see them get some actual quality wins before I move them up and like be hasty about it. Um, next we got the Minnesota Vikings, you know, and despite a win, they're still going to remain at 23. The Texans fell on their foot. they they fell on their face. And prove that they're not a good team. So, again, not a quality win. They still have a win percentage, like a strength of victory of zero. So, I'm sorry. If you have a strength of victory of zero, it's not like I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, good job. You're an amazing team. Like, let's go. The, the Vikings are actually something. It's like, no, they're not. Let's be fair. <laughs> let's be fair. The only reason they won is they went against the Texans team who's falling apart. Um, they go against Seattle next week. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they handle that um, on prime time. But again, if you fall, if you beat a team who fell on their face, it's not an accomplishment by any means. Uh, next, we got the Carolina Panthers moving up four spots after they beat the Arizona Cardinals. If the Panthers continue on the path that they're doing, they're going to compete for the NFC uh, South title. And honestly, with the game manager quarterback who controls the game and has a sense for how the game plays. Teddy Bridgewater, albeit not as good as Cam, um, is still an amazing quarterback who doesn't get as much respect as I feel like he deserves in the league um, for being that just wholesome, nice, quality dude. Um, who can actually, like, lead the Panthers in a lot of ways. And I feel like that's why Matt Rule loves this quarterback is because he's very, like, I guess the biggest way to explain it is just calm, cool, and collected. No matter what really happens, you don't see him rushing. You don't see him freaking out. You don't see him getting super aggravated with his team. So just having that good quality guy that's at the quarterback position is going to help you a lot. It's going to do a lot of major things. It's kind of like Drew Brees at quarterback. Um, and I feel like, honestly, I want I can't wait to see the Panthers against the Saints. I can't wait to see that matchup unfold, see how that goes. Because currently, they are third of the division with the other two teams being three and one, I believe. Nope. Nope. Because the Saints lost two games already. So uh, they are still third in the division, but they are actually keeping up and it'll be fun. I just can't wait to see kind of how these games kind of play out. And I can see them. I think they go against the Falcons this week, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, they do. They go against the Falcons. So if they end up being three and two, they'll be a winning team. They, and three games in a row after a couple, a skid after on a new system, it makes sense. Their struggles make sense. And they, honestly, as much as I don't view them as a playoff team, I do view them as a decent team who can, like, really do well. I have a lot of, like, things about this Carolina Panthers team. Like, I'm excited for them, and you can tell. Uh, but I got to move on to keep the video not an hour long. We got the Miami Dolphins. Who get to go plus three after they lost to Seattle, but kept it close the entire way through. The only thing I want to see from this Dolphins ball club next week, converting in the red zone. They did not do a good job at that at all last week at home. And honestly, if this team converted in the red zone more, that would be amazing. I wish I could see like the stats on the conversion rate of the Dolphins, but I feel like they're not actually. Oh, wait, no, they talked about it. The Dolphins are the worst team in conversion, touchdown conversion. They did talk about it during the broadcast, so um, I remember that. And if you're the worst team in touchdown conversion in the red zone, it's not going to help you at all. So I really, truly think if this team does much better in conversion in the red zone and focusing on the 20s, that they could be a really a good team. But again, with their in inability to convert within the 20s, they, they've got some work to do. Uh, very much so. So we'll see how this team progresses on the years, as the year unfolds. But I do believe that Brian Flores is a good coach for this team. They've got a young team, right? And if they are competitive with a young team, 
who knows how they're going to be with Tua and having a franchise quarterback under a system. And I, I really think this Dolphins ball club is going to rack up points and do good in the future. It's not their year this year, but in the future, they could be an NFC or a, excuse me, AFC uh, East competitor. Next, speaking, speaking of the NFC East, here's where I was jumping the gun a little bit. The Washington football team, plus one after a loss. Literally, the only reason they moved up <laughs> is because the Titan or the Texans fell. Um, again, I'm just seeing a lot of stagnation from this team. This team is not good. They're not bad either. Like, just the reason why they literally have only moved up one spot in four weeks and not move down. It's because they, they're not playing bad enough to move them down. But they're not playing good enough to move them up either. So, like, they're just stagnant. And I want to see them either progress or regress at some point. And it's going to happen. We're going to see it uh, at some point. Of course, I don't think this week. because Oh, no, we do. They go against the Rams. So, we'll see how they play against the Rams. But, yeah, they have. They I want to see them not stagnant. Um, and it'll be... Nice to see that, hopefully. Um, and I believe we're moving on. Yep, we are. We're moving on to the Detroit Lions. Again, a team that literally is only moving up because the Texans dropped off so far. Um, they did They did the Patricia. They did the Patricia and lost a game again with a positive 10 or more lead. That's the third time this year that they have done that. Three times they can also stay in the lead. Like, it's actually frustrating. Like, <laughs> it's really frustrating seeing this team continually drop leads because here I did it again. I called this team being a decent team. And I know this team has qualities and has good qualities. But again and again and again. Again and again and again, just like the Falcons, but instead of the fourth quarter, they lose it throughout the game. They lose a lead and they lose the game. It's so frustrating because the Detroit Lions are like, I knew that they were going to be a good team and a competitive team. And they're not, sh they're showing it in the first quarter, but Pete Carroll said it and he, I'm, and I'm going to reiterate, do you win a game in the first quarter? No. Do you win the game in the second quarter? No. Do you win the game in the third quarter? No. Do you win the game in the fourth quarter? Yes. You have to play well throughout the whole entire game until the fourth quarter where you can play again. You just play and conserve the victory. That is where you can be conservative and not be as aggressive. And like you, you play aggressive all the way till that fourth quarter. Once that fourth quarter rolls around, you need to be able to control the clock. And yes, this Lions team plays really well in the first quarter. But second and third quarter, they fall off and then they fall into a trap. And again, this is the trap that I feel like Matt Patricia has allowed. They have a, He has allowed the culture that his team is playing at. Any other coach in this league... I feel like would not allow his team to settle on a 14 point lead on the first quarter. Only Matt Patricia will let that happen. Like uh, this team, the fact that it matters, this team could be like four and zero. I believe, I believe they've had leads in every game in the first quarter so far. If they just continue to play at a high level from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, they could be looking like a playoff team. But again, they're not because Patricia lets them slide in the very, after they're like, okay, we got a comfortable lead. Let's let it go. Let it go like Frozen. But yeah, because, um, oh my gosh, uh, you know, unlike, it's unlike Matt Patricia's seat, who's literally at 180 degrees. Um, yeah. So anyway, I could talk and rant about this Lions team forever, but still, uh, I'm sure Lions fans don't want me to wreck their team the way, that way. Next, the team that drops Another big dropper is Texas, and I actually almost might in the thumbnail just put Texas as, like, you know, you go down and then just put the state of Texas because the, the state of Texas dropped 15 points. Um, defense, I said it last week, defense is suspect. Oh, they're really suspect. Um, so I hope Dallas wins, but I don't, they might not. Again, one of the upsets that could happen. 
Um, next, we got Chicago. Everybody's like, oh, Nick Foles is going to make this team so much better. Nick Foles is all magical as a backup. He's not magical as a starter. His career as a starter has not been great. I believe he has a losing record as a starter, but as a backup coming in, he has not. I don't think he's lost many games. Um, and he seems to perform at a high level in important situations, but if it's not important, he seems to do exactly what he did last week completely fall apart and do nothing. Um, and, you know, I said this was going to be a power move of the week. And as much as it didn't drop the Bears too much, it's because their defense. Their defense kept them from dropping below the Detroit Lions. Um, I honestly don't see this team as a good team. And, again, they're on the docket for power move of the week. Um, because if they lose again and lose at a high format, you can tell they're not a good team. Uh, I would said it, too. Like, their strength of victory is... One of the lowest in the league, if not also zero. Um, I actually got to double check this before I say it is zero. Let's see. They beat the Giants who got zero, who has zero. The Falcons who have zero. Okay. it's Their, their strength of victory is not zero. I said it last week and I need to reiterate it. Um, but they're 0-4, 0-4, and 1-3. And 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 so their strength of victory is now 1-12. No, it's not. 0 and 4, 0 and 4, and 1 and 3. It's not 0 and 12. Or 1 and 12. Uh, 4, 4, 8. It's 1 and 11. Like, if your strength of victory is that bad, you can tell you're just, you're better than the bad teams. Congratulations. That's why you're in the mid tier section. Um, but yeah, moving on. We have the San Francisco 49ers who are going to drop a spot. Again, I said it against with the Philadelphia. They lost that game ultimately. They didn't. They did not lose. They 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 lost it. Philadelphia didn't win it. So again, I think it is a lot of attribution to injuries and how that does have played out. This team just needs to play better, do better. Um, then we have Oakland, who also is going to drop a spot after losing to the uh, Bills in the fashion they did. The Bills really just controlled that game from the get go. Like. They did. They, and, you know, Oakland, I, I just said Oakland, oops, Las Vegas, the Raiders, who are, again, they're showing who they are as a team, and, I, like, I'm going to say it again, they're, if they make the playoffs, they're a six or seven seed, they're not winning that division, and they're not a good wild card team. Uh, next, we got Indy who uh, could win their division because I feel like uh, it is between Indy and Tennessee, but Tennessee's having issues um, keeping with protocol and safety. So I like they could win their division by default, which is so weird to say out loud, but they have an opportunity to win their division by default because the Texans and the Jags are trash. It's between them and the Titans. If the Titans have stupid corn cob 19 issues then they win their division like just plain and simple so they're just playing they're playing at a high level and i'm glad that the first week was not a representation of how this team is going to play throughout the year because oh my god i would have been really sad um next we got arizona who's going to drop four spots after their loss i you know what i'm going to say it right now I was right on the Cardinals in the beginning of the season. Everybody told me, you need to move them up because they're a good team. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can see that they haven't proved enough to me. I had them at 11 to start the season. Um, then I moved them up to 7. And then after I moved them up to 7, I dropped them steadily and steadily and steadily. And now they're the lowest point that they've been all season. And they are not looking like a top 10 team to me. I Like... I am a little upset that I didn't trust my gut and trust my judgment. But, again, that's one of the things is that it, I did. I, I was on the Cardinals hype train after they got their second victory. I was like, oh, my gosh, the Cardinals going to be good. I can't wait to go against them. Uh, and then now they've lost against two teams that weren't, quote, quote, good. Two teams that are below 18 they lost to. Um and 
they're going to continue to plummet if they continue to play the way that they are. Um, and they just they can't sustain victories like that. Um, so I'm hoping I'm hoping the Cardinals like are like back and forth and back and forth and like a good team, but also I'm like, yeah, I don't I don't see that in the future here. Uh, just not looking good. Kyler is, whew. yeah, it's it's been a train wreck. Then we got Tennessee, or not Tennessee, excuse me. We got Cleveland moving up six spots. The Browns played their hearts out. That is what I want to see from this team. I want to continue seeing this team play their hearts out and do the best that they can every single week. And I hope, I hope they do because they will be a fun team to watch throughout the year. The NFC or the AFC North could have three teams going into the playoffs. I could see it. If the Browns continue playing the way they are, there is a very high probability that three teams may get to the playoffs from that division. And that'll be awesome. Um, moving forth to the Tennessee Titans. They got a bye week, but they got the benefit of the Cardinals being trash. Um, but yeah, so I can't really talk about them. Bye week, I'm not going to drop you on your bye weeks, plain and simple. Uh, unless, you know, a team played extremely well to leapfrog you, but it's very hard to do that um, if I don't see the other team play. Speaking of teams that oh, could get leapfrogged, the Rams. They did not play like a top 10 team. Just saying. They really had struggles against the Giants at home. Which is bad. You can't if you can't you can't struggle against a bad team at home. I'm sorry. Just plain and simple. You can't. It's not something you're allowed to do. Then we got Tampa Bay. They move up two spots after a comeback win against the Chargers. Chargers are showing themselves. They're showing how good they are. They're showing what they can do. That's why both teams moved up this week. Uh and you know, comeback win. They showed the adversity that the Buccaneers did not have under Jameis Winston, and it's very awesome to kind of see this team progress and get better throughout the season. They are a division favorite, which is something that a lot of Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans are probably excited about. Like, Europe, the, they, they, they have a team out of the three teams. They have one to be really excited about, which is nice. Um, next, we got New Orleans uh, moving nowhere. The top eight is actually an interesting situation. Um, Saints... Fans, you're in trouble. Buccaneers might pass you next week. Just saying. Um, they scored 35 unanswered. That's all I got to say. But it was against the Lions. The fact that they had to score. They didn't actually have... They had the pedal to the metal. They did what the Lions should have done. Like, personally, that's what happened. They did what the Lions should have done. Uh, Patriots, despite a massive loss to the Chiefs, I know a lot of you guys would be like, why didn't you knock the Patriots down? And the Patriots should not be as high as they are. Tell me if any team would have beat the Chiefs, the backup quarterback. Because the NFL rushed that game so they didn't have to deal with any scheduling controversies or scheduling issues. You can... Tell me in the comments what team would have won with the backup quarterback in that situation out of just the, the blue. Like, oh, by the way, you're playing on Monday. Like, nobody, nobody would have done that. That's why they're not getting harmed or hurt in any situation because there is, I feel like that game being played was so unfair. It really was. Like, it truly should not have happened that way. And I actually did not like the fact that they played that game. I don't know if anybody did, but... I did not like the fact that they made the decision to play that game despite the issues and the problems that the Patriots were having. There is a reason that there was a backup Super Bowl plan for late February. Because stuff was going to happen, and we knew that stuff was going to happen. And they rushed the game anyway. I disagree with that entirely. Um, I did not like that call. So, again, you can blame me for that, but there was no reason to play that game. No reason at all. Then we got Buffalo staying where they are. Again, good win against the Raiders. Uh, unfor unfortunate for them, the Steelers are ahead of them. So, there's really nothing. They couldn't, like I said, I, I vow to keep teams at the spot that they were on the bye week. Um, unless they had an extremely good performance against a good team. <laughs> and they didn't show that. <clears throat> it wasn't an... Ex they had control of the game, but they were going against the Raiders. Like, again, it was one of our my power moves for the week. If the Raiders would have won, but 
again, they didn't, so not much movement. Steelers had a bye week because of the Tennessee's issues. Uh, um, so, yeah. So, here's a team that a lot of people are going to be like, why are they still at four? Like, dude, the amount of comments I got about the Seahawks being at the fourth spot <laughs> was ridiculously insane. Um, and I'm going to reiterate this. One through five are on the same level. They could really be flip-flopped in any which way. Besides, I, I should actually, let me rephrase that. Two through five can be situated in any which way. I feel like all three or all four of those teams are very equal to each other. But, like, the way they played Miami, that was very suspect. It really was. I mean, you can't tell me that that was, like, the best game in the world. Yeah, our defense got turnovers. But, again, it was a. I think it was really more of a constant of playing a bad team rather than, you know, like, being the best. Like, of course, like, we allowed, again... Against the Dolphins, 415 yards. We are still the worst in the NFL in that category. Our third down efficiency went from 5 of 13 to 4 of 10. Like, again, third down efficiency is a problem for this team. We don't want to get to third down. That's not, uh, that would be bad if we did. Yes, we were penalty penaltyless, and we talked about this, um, which is awesome. That's the first time we've been penaltyless since 2007, so we showed the discipline uh, on our team. But, a combined third and fourth down, four of 11. We are one of the worst third down teams in the league at the moment. You can't be a number one, two, or three without being good on third down and having a good defense. Because if you're not good on third down, you can't control the clock. As you see in this last game, we did not win time of possession, something we usually win on a constant basis. Um, and if you lose time of possession against the Dolphins, why would I move you up? Why would I say, oh, you're a better team because you lost time of possession to the Dolphins of all teams? Like, again, we won. We're 4-0, but we did not look like a 4-0 team, and we did not play well enough to be 4-0. I'm not going to rag on this team enough, a lot. Enough. I say enough. Like, this team has done terrible. Yeah, we have a lot of injuries. We got a lot of things to overcome, and I feel like this team is a great team team this is a 100 percent a great team there's just some issues this team needs to work out before i'm gonna be like oh they're a top three team um obviously again i'm gonna get ragged in the comments for having them before because I, but just take it this way the nfl has us at six so the nfl's got the steelers and the buffalo bills ahead of us so at least i have us at four <laughs> at least i have us higher than the nfl does because at least i respect the fact that we're definitely better than uh a couple like like i said the steelers and the bills um i feel like it like it is that is true um next we have the baltimore ravens staying at number three um obviously this is the ravens they played football team and like if you look at the stats they allowed 343 total yards, but they barely lost time of possession. Their third down efficiency was not good either. Neither team was. Um, so they definitely need to work things out. But they, when it counted, they got the fourth downs. So, again, they're, uh, again, two through five are on the same level. They're basically the same kind of teams, and they need to separate themselves before I start moving them. Green Bay. A lot of people said that Green Bay should not be at two. With the way Aaron Rodgers is playing, if Green Bay isn't at two, then I'm literally, like, committing, like, something. Like, honestly, there's no way this team is not at two. But against the Falcons, again, lost time of possession. But they had a much better defense. They are much better at fourth, third down efficiency. They did great on defense and third down efficiency. Like, they, th this is, like, that's what you want to see from a team. But because, you know, time of possession, you know, I say, you know, if you lose time of possession by like a couple, like 30 seconds, that's not really losing time of possession. You're just tied. And that's kind of how the that was the way that the uh, Ravens and Falcons or Ravens and Packers did. They only lost time of possession by 30 seconds. Seahawks lost about almost eight minutes. Like that was bad. Now we have the Chiefs at number one. Obviously, there's nobody beating the Chiefs. But again, they kind of got a virtue of an easy win. So, I honestly was debating on knocking them down. But again, you can't knock down the number one team until they lost. 
Um, third down efficiency was not great at all. Um, not at all at all. And they lost time of possession by quite a bit. So they did not look like a premier team in the league by any like stretch of the imagination. Like they did not look that great. Again, here we are. Like I'm just if they lose, they could easily get knocked down to two, maybe even three. Um, with the Seahawks moving up and flipping over the Ravens, like it all is kind of dependent on whether or not these teams will actually play well. And this top section could get moved next week. You never know with the way that some of these teams are playing. Um, I will be interested to see how things work, but I actually wrote it down this week. Our power moves of the week. The first one is actually going to be play. It's actually probably in progress right now. By the time you're seeing this, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Chicago Bears, number nine at number seventeen. I think the Bears win. They prove that they are a good team. They get a quality win. If Tampa Bay wins, they it's just like which team is going to prove that they're a quality four and one team? I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are better, um, obviously because they're higher in the power rankings. Um, but I feel like if they lose, I feel like both of these teams could be like 14 and 15 or 13 and 14. It really just depends on how these teams play and what these teams do. Um, next is number six, Buffalo at number 11, Tennessee. This could be a forfeit victory. I'm hoping not because this is actually a really good game. Um, uh, and if they want to play this forfeit game, then that's like a stupid thing for them to do. Again, they have the extra weeks for a reason. They have like three weeks for a reason. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping they play this game um as long as everybody's been tested negative and there's no issues um uh, with the corn cob but we'll see uh then we got the game of the week colts browns that's the game of the week for y'all and i'm hoping that these teams play well and do well i feel like all of these teams have the potential to play their hearts up uh, I know this was a longer video, but I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, hoping, let me know what you think in the comments. Was I too harsh on a specific team? Um, where do I should I move these teams in the future? Um, depending on how they play, obviously. Hopefully, you guys had a wonderful day. I had a wonderful day myself. I love you all. I'll see you guys in a couple hours with some Enter the Gungeon live streaming. Um, but yeah, see you soon. Bye.